We're going to be talking tonight about your straw man. And David then is going to add more information about the, how this all came about. And then we're going to open it up for discussion. Let's get going. I'm going to share the screen here. If nobody has told you that you have a straw man, then this could be a very interesting experience for you. Your straw man was created when you were very young, far too young to know anything about it. But then it was meant to be a secret, as its purpose is to swindle you. And it has been used very effectively to do just that ever since it was created. So perhaps it's about time that you learned about your straw man and how you can stop it being used against you. Knowing about it is the most important first step. You need to go on a journey of discovery. And I'm afraid that what you're about to discover is not very pleasant. However, if you decide to act on what you learn, it could change your life for the better. If you think that you are in debt, then you can get out of it if you are willing to stand up for your rights and refuse to be swindled any longer. Interested? If so, then let's start at the beginning and find out where your straw man came and why you should care about it. It all started when your parents had a happy event and you entered the world. You don't know exactly when that was because you were not aware of the days of the week, the months of the year, or even what year it was. Even after some months had gone by, you still were not aware of these things, but by that time, your straw man had already been created and it was going to be used to make some very unscrupulous, very rich. None of this was your fault. It happened because your parents were fooled into thinking that they needed to register your birth and get a birth certificate for you. Now you might recall on previous videos we've made, when you register something, you give the ownership of that item to somebody else. And so your parents didn't know this, so they applied for a birth certificate, not understanding what would happen when they did. So what did happen? According to the local authority, one, they lost ownership of their baby, that was you, and two, they allowed a straw man to be created. It's not something that they can be blamed for, as nobody told them it would or even could happen. Nor did anybody tell them what a straw man is or how it can be used against their baby. In actual fact, the registration is a contract. And in reality, it's null and void because there was not full disclosure by the local authority, nor was there intent to contract on the part of the parents. They just, they just thought they were registering your identity with the government so that you could later on deal with the government, get a passport and all the other good stuff that governments <coughs> supply. And I cough there because it's not really true. So the registering of a baby's birth actually passes ownership of the baby to the local authority. And that alone allows the local authority staff to take their child away from the parents if they ever want to do that. And we're seeing this happening more and more in Australia, aren't we? This applies until the child reaches the age of maturity set by the current legal statutes. Doing that is not lawful, but after the birth has been registered, it is legal. And there is a world of difference between those two terms, a difference which is very important for you to understand clearly. So ownership of the baby means that you actually do not belong to yourself. So when you go into a courtroom, it's not you walking in there because you have been summoned by the all capitals name. That is your straw man. So Trisha corrects this information stating, there is no application for a birth certificate. The state creates one no matter what, with or without any parent providing information. The paper on which they provide information is called an information sheet, not an application. The parent signs only as informant, not as any applicant. The baby is not registered at all. Only the birth event is registered, which is the birthing of the new fictitious entity name being created by the state. And <clears throat> once it's created, the state must use your name in all caps to deal with you. So if you get a speeding ticket or a fine in the mail, you'll notice your name is in caps. 
So the state then issues you a certified copy of the original, which the state keeps as legal title to that fictitious entity name. You merely use the state-owned legal person to conduct any commerce within the state regulated legal system of commerce, all of which is just fiction. Even when the parents signed as informant, that was not their signature they signed, but the signature for this fiction name the state owns and created after they were born. Everyone has a copy of the birth certificate, is authorized by the state to use the state property name and authorized to sign that name for that name. Everything you use that name for is all liability of the state. It is their property. They hold original legal title to it. The only reason everyone has problems from using that name is only because they believe it is their property. So they make claims to that name because of merely believing that is their property, which is actually a false claim they make against state-owned property. It's the same thing with your car. When you register your car, you're actually giving the state ownership of your car. You no longer own it. That's why they will fine you, why they will take your car if they don't like the way you behave. So anytime a claim is made in any court, that claim must be bonded or insured. So your claim becomes your consent, where you pledge your body and or property as your bond or insurance as surety against your claim. When you lose, they take your body and put it in jail while their bond created cures, or they take your property to pay your loss in court for your claim, which you made. Good grief. And people wonder why when they go to court, they lose. So D David, would you like to comment on that? In our seminar that we're creating, Mike, to teach people all about these things, comprehensive seminar that we'll be releasing soon. I set out the seven rules you need to understand to, to beat the fines and confront all of this, of this injustice. So last week we spoke about Whitlam in 1973, converted all of the government into private corporations. And by doing so, he effectively separated them from the constitution. That's rule number one. Rule number two, from that point on, all government activity has to be conducted via contracts where the terms are set out and each party agrees to the terms. Rule number three, under the constitution, a private corporation cannot enter into a contract agreement with a living man or woman. Rule number four, therefore the government has to create a twin person for each individual. And that twin has to have some kind of corporate structure that can enter into contracts, which is what Mike was just describing. So they allocate to each person personal trust, which we're referring to as the straw man, or a set the K trust, which you are tied to at birth, as Mike has just explained. Rule number five, the government, local council, or whoever sends you a bill, an infringement notice, or rates notice, whatever, it must be in the form of an offer for contract. So it can't be addressed to you, the living individual. It has to be addressed to your corporate twin. And it's easy to notice that who it's addressed to your twin, because they always define your twin in capital letters, as we just explained. Rule number six, under law, this bill is only payable by you, the living individual, if you decide the terms are fair and reasonable. You must then accept the contract on behalf of your twin, the trust entity assigned, it, assigned to you at your birth. If you don't think the contract is fair and you don't want to agree to it, you don't have to. You simply announce, I do not consent to contract, and that's the end of the matter. And those seven basic rules, are the very stuff of what the common law issue is all about. True. All right. We've got a few people in the audience here tonight. Anybody would like to ask questions or make comments, discuss it? Who's first? <clears throat> Michael, I'm sure you've got some very good ideas about this and can help educate people. You have to turn on your microphone. <laughs> yeah, now I'm, I'm familiar with what you've been reading and I'm just, if you want to, I don't know, if you want to see, I don't know what to add to be honest. Sorry to put you on the spot, mate. Okay. Well, <laughs> you could probably comment, Mike, in terms of, 
how this actually works in, in real life, since you've passed through over 100 court cases confronting this very issue, right? Sorry, I'll, I'll catch me up on it. What was what, what? <laughs> I wasn't really. You, you've seen this uh, working in real life. Yes, yes. With, uh, court cases where in court you, case, yeah, yeah, where people are basically writing to the, they get an infringement fine and they write to the government and they go, "I'm not going to, I'm not going to consent to this contract. I'm not going to join myself to it. I waive all of the benefits." And then they actually say those things in court. And your court appearance can be that simplistic, can't it? It can be very simple. When you're front, court, courts have no jurisdiction over you. And that's the, that's the most important thing to remember when you walk into a court. They, the physical bodies in there they think they're your masters. And they're actually nothing. They're, they just don't have any power over you unless you do consent to what they're doing to you, basically. The mindset would be that who they've called in there is your straw man. It's not you. It's not you, the living man, it's the straw man. So it's very important that whoever does turn up in court is very clear in mind and uh, is uh, very clear in mind that they they don't join the, with the straw man that's been called in there. You are not one and the same. You are totally separate. And that's why it's important to use words like uh, I'm the beneficiary of the trust that's been called in here today. Am I making sense? Yes, yeah. mm -hmm. at least for me. And, yeah, language and it's, is things like that, it's things like that you would say throughout the whole court procedure because they'll constantly try and change the direction of their court to try and stitch you up, uh, try and trip you up so that you unwittingly have joined it with them. So it's important to say my philosophy with everybody is uh, little is more. Mm. So don't go waffling on, don't be in an argumentative way, arguing with the, what the prosecution says or whatever. You can say the odd objection hearsay or objection presumption, you know, you, when the prosecutor's talking, so you cancel everything that he says out. You want to try and keep you and the judge separate. <laughs> you don't want to join it with him. Once he joined us, once you joined it with him, he's got you. Yes, I think that's a very valid point. Uh, whenever you're dealing with these people, whether it's the police or the courts, silence is golden. Say as little as possible. And the police will tell you if they've come to get you, anything you say can and will be used against you. Anything before. That's everything, your interaction with them, everything before they arrest you and then read you your Miranda rights. Mm. Everything you said before that is still counted in building their case against you. That's Correct. why you just don't answer questions. When they ask you one, oh, I don't answer questions. And he reminded, I did not, I didn't consent to contract. Why are you still talking to me? I didn't consent to contract. You know what? And implied or stated by by an ABN employ a corporate employee. I don't even call them police officers. I'm respectful. You've got to stay within yourself in honor as a human being. You've got to be in honor. But you you can make get your point across firmly, respectfully, but very short. Keep it very short. All right, let's do a, let's say a policeman has pulled me up. And my advice is always, when you stop by a policeman, you lock all your doors, you wind up all your windows and just crack open the driver's side, just enough to talk to the policeman and if necessary, hand in paperwork or whatever. Random breath tests are actually illegal. They mm. can't, they don't have any authority to do that. They constantly do in their own mind think they got all the right in the world because they wear a blue uniform and a gun on the hip, but actually there are court cases that say they're not. If they ask for a driver's license, you can ask for their ID first. It is a police policy. They must identify you, identify themselves fully. If he's done it, I'm such, such and such and such from, from the precinct and then ask for his badge number because they generally won't quote you the badge number. They just say, I'm such and so and so from Maruba police station, traffic control or whatever. And, and he'll or, or usually just ask, ask for your driver's license. And when you do so, give it to him, yeah. but, but say under duress, here's the government property. Okay. I'm going to share the screen now because you said something before that they have no right to stop you, especially for an RBT. And, yeah. and Anything else, in fact, too, because even a red light, if you go through a red light, they can't stop you. 
And this has been told to us by three court cases, Regina versus Banner, 1970, Andrew Hamilton versus the Director of Public Prosecutions, and Magistrate Duncan Reynolds in Melbourne, July 2013. And basically, I'm going to read the first one because I think he explains it very well. In this judgment, the Northern Territory Supreme Court handed down a ruling that police officers have no power whatsoever to arrest or detain a citizen for the purpose of questioning him or her or of facilitating their investigations. It matters not at all whether the questioning or the investigation is for the purpose of enabling them to ascertain whether he is the person guilty of a crime known to have been committed, or is for the purpose of enabling them to discover whether a crime has or has not been committed. If the police do so act in purported exercise of such a power, their conduct is not only destructive of civil liberties, but it is unlawful. So the police have no right to stop you unless they believe you have committed a crime or they have seen you commit a crime. And a crime is not going through a red light. That's only a legislative misdemeanor. A crime would be killing somebody, assaulting somebody. So you need to know what your rights are. Now, if the policeman does act unlawfully, make sure you film the man or woman and record everything so that you've got a record of it. They have a record of it, you have a record. Is the Australia Act lawful? Can state governments shut borders? Can the government lock us down in our homes? When was the last Governor General appointed by Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II? These and many other questions are all answered in Dick Yardley's book, Australian Political and Religious Leaders, Treason, Treachery and Sabotage. If you want to know why our country is in such a mess, this book explains it all. And if you want to take anyone in the government to a common law court, you will need this book to refer to. A working knowledge of our political system is essential if we are going to get our country back on track. Don't miss out. Get this book now. Thank you for that, Michael. John, you had your hand up for a question. Yeah, I noticed some people are trying to get hold of their live birth, use that in court to prove mm. that they're a living being. Can I answer that one? Your live birth, if you're applying for your live birth from birth, deaths and marriages, they give you a hell of a time giving you the copy and when they do issue you the copy if you read the bottom of the page it's not a live birth anyway so you're wasting your time getting a live birth from birth deaths and marriages i think the biggest the the best evidence of your being alive is to actually look at your face yeah <laughs> the policeman says can you identify yourself well, of course i can i can look in the mirror and see myself you are you're the living man right there in the courtroom exactly remember they're looking they're, your birth certificate is your straw man it's not you are the living man so your normal birth certificate if you take it in with you the one they give you the straw man one that identify if they ask is he here are you here or whatever the case is that he's right here because it's the straw man that's who they've called it mm. i'm the beneficiary of this mm. <laughs> so you don't need live birth to be presented in court they can see you a lot you're flesh and blood if you look at your birth certificate it shows your name and your father's name and mother's name but your name is only your uh, christian name or christian and the middle name so my name is michael thomas of the family holt so my father's name is tom holt but my name is michael thomas of the family holt and his name is Thomas Patrick of the family Holt. And so that's where the surname comes in. All right, I think we'll leave it there for now, unless we've got anything else you'd like to add. I think maybe just finishing the understanding this simple fact, and it is very simple, but very difficult for people to get their head around. And it takes quite a bit, doesn't it, Mike? It's, it's hard it's, to it's understand. Really difficult for some reason to understand I, I even talking about myself, but it is the key factor in understanding your rights and where they come from and the division between the constitution and the statutes that they're throwing at us and the way that they're trying to get away all the time with imposing all kinds of rules and, and restrictions on us. It's all the nexus between our understanding that we are a living man, a living woman, 
and their statutes are related to that straw man. It's a key part of what we need to learn. Yeah, one of the biggest, the hardest part for, the, for me before I understood all of this was people kept telling me, you need to establish your live living self when you go to court because we're dealing with a government corporation. And I kept saying, what are you talking about? We have a constitution and that constitution is the highest law of the land and designed to protect me. And they kept saying, yes, but when you go to court, that's not you appearing in court. That's your straw man. And I'm thinking, what's a straw man? And so I hope that tonight this video will help people to understand the difference. We are two identities. One identity is the living human being and the other one is our straw man which we use to deal with bureaucracy and courts and police, etc. And now, a word from our sponsor, who helps keep these podcasts going. Redpillhosting.com is your one-stop shop to buy your perfect domain name. Then get your own hosting server, or buy our easy-to-use website builder from just $8.99 a month. Yes, you heard that right just $8.99. Building your own website can feel like a daunting task. Who wants to deal with code anyway? Website Builder makes it simple to create a modern, professional website with no technical knowledge required. Share your passion online. With redpillhosting.com you get responsive mobile design, professional website hosting, rapid page load performance, secure SSL, 24-7 support and much more do you need a shopping cart to go with that we have just the right one for you what sort of server do you need to host your website we can advise you on the best solution for your needs choose linux windows or vps hosting select what type of back office management system you need from cpanel plesk or wordpress hosting no matter what you need redpillhosting.com is the place to get it visit us at redpillhosting.com whenever you need us mike i've got a question if i can ask sure yeah i've still got my original birth certificate which i've had for many years it's dated 1949 and at some stage it got misplaced or lost and it did turn up a few years later however in the meantime i had to get a copy of the birth certificate and the copy actually looked very different and probably a third of the size mm. of the original, which was like a foolscap sheet size, the original, and very elaborate looking. But the birth copy is just a pretty boring piece of paper. I, I'm just thinking, my question is, that original, which I've got, I guess my parents got it back when I was born or soon after, uh, I've still got, is that the straw man document that you're talking about michael would you like to answer yeah sorry <laughs> <He's copying. laughs> now i've just gone through my q-sips so I've, I've done searches on my q-sips so yeah sorry yeah sorry can you just ask the uh, ask the question again please i think the, to, to sum it up the original uh, birth certificate that yeah. Peter had, and it's the same for mine uh was pretty elaborate looking and quite official looking and yet the copy was very different but does that original uh, birth certificate establish him as the straw man yeah it does yeah my birth certificate when that i was born with i was born in adelaide i think south australia was the last state to actually go electronic and then everyone gets an electronic number mine's actually on there written on there saying that it's a book number 36 page 29 line 20 that's how it's telling it's it tells you on the certificate what book a book number you got to look in and then tells you the page and the line number and everything where i've been registered so i haven't ever uh, since i was born i've never gone to birth deaths and marriages and asked for a, a new birth certificate because if i have if i had they would send me one of these brand new Fandingle things and it would have a long number in it. So it would be it'd have nine nine numbers in it or something like that. Yeah. So, um, 
Yeah, yeah, your birth certificate is the it's the start of all evil. <laughs> your whole life, you live your you're living your whole life thinking that you're that you are a person, which you are, but you're government property. And everything every time you sign, every time you make a contract with the bank for a loan or credit card or car registration or whatever the case is, you've just recontracted with them. And they don't tell you, they don't disclose you. They don't disclose everything to you either. Okay, well, I've got uh, another question to follow on from that. Then, if my parents never registered or allowed my birth to be registered, I'd have no birth certificate. Therefore, I'd have no government identity. Therefore, I couldn't apply for a bank account. Or I couldn't apply for a passport. Couldn't apply for a driver's license. So, what happens then? I'm sixty. I'm sixty. If I was born with no birth certificate and I, my life carried on like it actually did up to the age of 60, I'd be a very rich man. I wouldn't need the government. I wouldn't be paying income tax. You'd be surprised just how much tax you pay out of every wage packet. And if you didn't have to do that and you lived off the grid, you wouldn't need it. You'd have enough money if you needed medical attention. You could go into a doctor and pay cash. You go, if you need an operation, you go in there and negotiate a price because you're paying cash. Mm. Yeah. All right. Thank you all very much for coming along tonight. And I hope this has been helpful for you to understand the difference between you, the living person, and you, the straw man. Mm. Good night. If you're enjoying the Bloody Aussie Battler podcast, please consider donating to help keep us going. You can donate just once or make it a monthly donation. Any amount is welcome. To donate, go to our website at www.thebloodyaussiebattler.com and click on Donate. Come on, Aussies.
days now it's up to you are you ready to stand up and fight stop bowing to your masters begging for our rights we the people will stand strong and true standing Damn politicians Thought they'd never lie We the people will stand strong and true Standing for the red, white and blue Time to join together 